Although there are very few horses working nowadays in the cultivation of arable land, there are still farms in wilder parts of the country where they're indispensable. In Wales, shepherds ride horses to tend their sheep. The big flocks roam many miles among the mountains in search of grazing. And when they need to be found and rounded up, the job is done from the saddle. These sheep herdsmen are using horses very much as early man did when he first domesticated the horse. Man survived originally as a hunter and killed wild horses for food as he killed other animals as and when the need and the opportunity arose. It was when he perceived that the horse might be ridden that he was able to establish his own herds of animals and control them from horseback. These men, riding so casually with elementary reins, are not so very different from the first horsemen that are depicted in prehistoric paintings on the walls of cave dwellings. They're an echo of the very beginnings of civilization, which began when man learned to tame and train and ride the horse. Later came the wheel and chariots and cavalry and many terrible wars, all of which were won or lost by men on horseback. It's a long cry from the wild invading hordes of Genghis Khan to these peaceful Welsh shepherds, but that's how the story began. Cutting down a tree, whether by power or simply by hand, has never been a particularly difficult task. But removing the trunk of the tree after it's been felled has always required ingenuity and great strength. A strength that was provided for centuries by horses. Of course, forestry, as befits one of Britain's major industries, has long been mechanised. And these are two of the last horses that are still at work among the trees. It's largely sentiment and habit that make these foresters continue to use the horse. But there are other reasons. Horses can be manoeuvred into confined and inaccessible spaces, and they cause far less damage underfoot than tractors. But more than that, they're endlessly patient and obedient, and they offer a kind of comfort and company to men working in lonely places. So much of Britain's history was made by men and horses working together just like this. When great stretches of lowland Britain consisted of woodland, they cleared it ready for farming. And horses and wood were two basic sources of power. It was wood that was made into charcoal to smelt iron. And wood was the only raw material for so many purposes, for making houses and barns and furniture and wheels and carts and carriages for horses to pull. And England became a great naval power because it had stout timber to build ships. Timber that was felled by men and dragged out of the great forests by horses. We owe so much to the working horses that we've almost forgotten. It's articulated lorries now, and great containers that roll along motorways that are far too quick for horses. Yet, we've barely had motors and engines for a hundred years, while horses have served us for thousands. It isn't their fault that we don't need them anymore. 
but we'd surely be to blame if we discarded them now, as once we so very nearly did. Having used them for so long, and not always kindly, perhaps it's really time that we encouraged them to exist and to work, but not too hard, if only to remind us of the great debt that we owe them. All that power, all that patience, all those years and years of work should surely be rewarded. Thank you, Dobbin.